Good evening. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the jury for its service. Uh, jurors perform a fundamental civic duty. Their service is literally the cornerstone of our judicial system. We should all uh, be thankful for the careful attention uh, that this jury paid to the evidence and the law um, and their time and commitment over these past several weeks. Uh, 12 everyday New Yorkers, uh, and of course our alternates, heard testimony from 22 witnesses, including former and current employees of the defendant, media executives, book publishers, custodians of records, and others. They reviewed call logs, text messages, and emails. They heard recordings. They saw checks and invoices, bank statements, and calendar appointments. This type of white collar prosecution is core to what we do at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. In the 1930s, District Attorney Thomas Dewey ushered in the era of the modern independent professional prosecutor. For now nearly 90 years, dedicated professionals in this office have built upon that fine tradition. A major part of our practice during that nearly 90 years has been public integrity work, including cases uh, involving jurists, local and state electeds, uh, public servants, and others. I want to thank this phenomenal prosecution team uh, embodying the finest traditions of this office, professionalism, integrity, dedication, and service. Uh, they are model public servants, uh, and I am proud and humbled to serve side by side with them. The 12 everyday jurors vowed to make a decision based on the evidence and the law, and the evidence and the law alone. Their deliberations led them to a unanimous conclusion beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Donald J. Trump, is guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree to conceal a scheme to corrupt the 2016 election. And while this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes through the courtroom doors, by following the facts and the law and doing so without fear or favor. I want to conclude uh, by expressing deep gratitude uh, to the NYPD and the officers of the officers of the Office of Court Administration uh, for securing the courthouse, all of our safety, making sure the courthouse and all of the other matters that are important in their own right continued uh, seamlessly. Uh, they will continue to be and have always been uh, incredible partners. Thank you. And do you plan to request a, a prison sentence for this conviction? And do you think that uh, Donald Trump's multiple violations of the gag order that was in place should factor in that request at all? Uh, the judge uh, scheduled a, a sentencing for July 11th. Uh, we will speak in court in that time. He also set a motion schedule. Uh, we will speak in our court filings as we've done throughout this proceeding. Donald Trump has repeatedly targeted you personally and members of I do not. I did my job. Our job is to follow the facts and the law without fear or favor. Uh, and that's exactly what we did here. And what I feel is gratitude to work alongside 
phenomenal public servants who do that each and every day uh, in matters that you all write about uh, and make the press, and in lots of matters that you don't. Uh, I did my job. We did our job. Um, many voices out there. Um, the only voice that matters is the voice of the jury, and the jury has spoken. Mr. Steinglass, um, many people said the prosecution was masterful and flawless. Just want to know how you feel at this moment. Sorry. How do you feel? Uh, Mr. Steinglass, I think some of you probably saw him speak for a little bit the other day. Uh, <laughs> so he's done his job, uh, as has this uh, uh, team. Uh, and he just told me, tell him how I feel. I think you said that. I will just say just e enormous gratitude. You know, our, our system, I talked about the jurors uh, at the beginning of my remarks. Uh, we have a phenomenal system. Uh, uh, Twelve everyday New Yorkers, uh, they listen to uh, the judge's directions. They follow the evidence. You saw them in court every day. They were uh, careful and attentive. Uh, and so I feel deep gratitude to work alongside them. Uh, to be a part of this system. Uh, and I just want to echo that this is what we're doing every single day. I mean, during this trial, um, you know, just this week, right, a, a ghost gun indictment, uh, um, Grimaldi's wage theft, uh, a, a plea resolution, um, sex crimes, convictions, uh, all sorts of work that's being done by phenomenal public servants. So we're, we're before you today on this obviously consequential matter. Uh, but this is what we do every day. We follow the facts and the law without fear or favor. Uh, if a jail sentence is in the cards, it is likely that Trump and his attorneys would seek a stay on enforcement of that sentence pending appeal. If that were the scenario, would your office object to staying, uh, staying the sentence? I'm going to let... Our words in court uh, speak for themselves when we get to the sentencing matter. I'm not going to address uh, hypotheticals. They raise arguments. Uh, we'll respond. Um, and I think your, your question really underscores an important point. This is an active ongoing matter, right? We have other phases of this going ahead. We will continue to do our speaking about this matter, um, about issues like that in court. All right, last one. From day one, kind of the viability of this case has been questioned in, in all sorts of uh, media outlets all, all over the place, including from the defendant himself. Can you respond to any of that, how, how you feel now that you've gotten the conviction? So my, my response again is I did my job. You've been listening to Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg discuss the guilty verdict in Donald Trump's criminal trial. Uh, CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins me again from Washington. Scott, he defended the jury system, didn't defend it, praised it, um, said this is what the Manhattan District Attorney's Office does every day. Um, what did you take away from the Manhattan District Attorney? First of all, the phrase he used, that the only voice that matters is the voice of the jury, because there are no shortage of voices in this case, after this case, before this case, and we're going to hear quite a bit from Trump and his supporters. Um, the other thing that he says, which comes right out of that playbook, I guess, they hand you when you become a prosecutor, is when you're asked about what you're going to seek at sentencing, you say, I will speak through my court filings. Between now and some deadlines set for June and July, Alvin Bragg's team will speak through their filings what type of sentence they're going to recommend in this case. Um, it really is the overarching question we're stuck with now until July 11th. What type of penalty does Donald Trump face? The prosecutors get to make a recommendation. Most certainly the defense gets to make a recommendation. But just count me as dubious that you can etch that July 11th date into stone, John. Four days before the Republican National Convention, any number of tactics, um, legal points of order Donald Trump can make to try to push that date mm -hmm. back, he's likely to employ them if he sees fit to do so. He certainly has in every other venue. Scott McFarland in Washington, thank you so much, Scott. Coming up, a special edition of America Decides. My colleague, Caitlin Huey Burns, will have continuing coverage of Donald Trump's conviction on 34 felony counts. On our places, right shiny faces. When you wake up in the morning, we want to be your go-to team. Nate has one of the quickest minds I've ever seen. Tony has a way of making people feel 